I believe God has given America's last warning in the skies. There have been three great eclipses. One is coming that marks the United States out purposefully. No other religion in the world, no other God in the world does this. The sun, moon, and stars obey his command. The first one went across the continental United States, the 48 states, on the 21st of August, 2017. I stood in Houston, Texas, and I proclaimed that this would be a judgment and God would give seven years for America to repent. Hurricane Harvey came. It was calculated to be the costliest natural disaster in U.S. history. I was disappointed, though, that I didn't know where the location would be, and I came to find out prophecies this way. You will learn and you will understand prophecy as it unfolds. Nobody gets to impress people with, well, I knew the future perfectly. No, you just got to preach the word, preach the word, and as it unfolds, I believe when it's clear, when the, when the true meaning is given of a prophecy, it's so clear that everyone says, well, that was obvious. How could we have not seen it? How could we deny it? That's the way prophecy works. God's not trying to hide things. He's trying to reveal things. So I stood there in Houston, and the place where I stood was flooded. And, the, and everybody in the whole city was flooded. And I just thought, Lord, why didn't you tell me ahead of time? I had to wait until the next solar eclipse. It was the October 14, 2023 eclipse. And I realized that that one crosses the next one in 2024. And it marks exactly the spot where Hurricane Harvey came. So now that that's confirmed, but we didn't overlay all three at that time. We just knew the two. But now that we overlay all three, we realize, you can see, there are three spots being marked out on the map. So those are the, the hot zones. That's where Little Egypt in Illinois has been marked out, probably an earthquake. Something has been marked out in Oregon. Not sure yet what it is, but we've had fire in Texas. We've had water in Texas. And today, this morning, as you woke up, I don't know if you realize this, but this is breaking news in Texas. Thousands of they say, beautiful but toxic sea creatures washing up on the Texas shores. Did you see this on the news? Okay, interesting. I'll read a little bit. Thousands of beautiful but dangerous sea creatures. Bungling plans for many spring breakers. The blue dragon, as we're going to talk about what the dragon is, little dragons are washing up on the seashore. You get that? That's God giving warning signs. Uh, these are shellless mollusks known as the most beautiful killer in the ocean. That's not good. Beautiful, so we welcome it. We say, yeah, come on in, you're very beautiful. And it's the most dangerous killer in the ocean. Ocean represents the Gentile nations. They popped up in droves along the shores of North Padre Island Sunday for the first time this year. Uh, Sunday's today. This is breaking news, isn't that amazing? So it's the same thing happened at the solar eclipse uh, last October. As I was preaching it, I, I had Laura Trump, Eric Trump, and General Mike Flynn with me, and none of them knew at the moment I'm preaching the solar eclipse is happening outside of the stadium. How could they have known? That when they invited me, nobody knew that that was the day and the moment. God is working. What is God doing? These are just cute things. These are warning signs. Say, so pay attention, right? And, and what's cool is our lives are in his hands. Amen. If he can direct us to meet today, despite all odds, does he not care about us? It's a miracle to be here in this church today. Lots of things would have stopped you from coming today, but you made it. So don't check out or just sit and say, oh, it's another prophecy sermon. Pay attention. I already know it. I went to Bible school. Please pay attention. God called you here today. All right, so those three places have been marked. And I believe, as the dragon points to, and as the sun points to, I believe this last solar eclipse clearly points to Islam. So I want to explain this, because I don't think I've heard this, and you've not heard this elsewhere. First of all, we had a sign that Jesus told us about in the New Testament called the sign of Jonah. And we need to read this. Jesus said twice, no sign, twice, by the way, Matthew 12 and Matthew 16, no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Now, we spiritualize that and we say that, well, that's the sign of the resurrection, okay? But could it mean something else? I think the people in that time, even before the resurrection took place, understood what the sign of so Jonah was. 
Take a look at the context of chapter 16, verse 4. What's the context? The previous verse. What does verse 3 say? Jesus said, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. So what's the sign of Jonah in context? If you don't interpret it, what is it? Something in the sky. Did he not say, look up? Everyone say, look up. <laughs> All right, so what happened? In 763 BC, on the 15th of June, on our Gregorian calendar, there was a great total solar eclipse that went over Assyria, and specifically their capital city of Nineveh. So the sign of Jonah is at least that Assyrian Abur Segel eclipse in 6, 763 BC, but not only that, there were two plagues that preceded the solar eclipse and followed the eclipse. The two plagues are recorded in Assyrian history in 765 BC and in 760 BC. Not only that, there was a great earthquake recorded in Amos 1.1. It's so famous, it just says, at that earthquake, at the time of that earthquake. It was the earthquake that everyone knew about, and it occurred in 760 BC. That's after the eclipse. You get an eclipse, you get an earthquake and a plague. You get an eclipse, you get an earthquake and a plague. That's the sign of Jonah. So without having to know the New Testament or Bible prophecy, every listener at the time of Jesus' preaching would have understood. What's the sign of Jonah? Look up, discern, there was a total solar eclipse, a great earthquake, and a plague. Doesn't that match the four horses that we've been talking about in the book of Revelation? It's all there. So this is a warning. Not only that, but you pull back and you realize, okay, where is the warning given? It's over the territory of present-day Islamic countries. So this eclipse could have been recorded anywhere else, but it's now over a region that is all covered by Islam. And I believe that's the Antichrist religion. Like literally, okay? Not be, be smirching or defaming anyone. Literally, they say on the Dome of the Rock, God has no son. That's Antichrist. So whatever we preach, whatever we say in the Bible, whatever God revealed, they just took that and just reverse it, just say the opposite. God, had, God says he has a son, they say he has no son. Well, that's not very original. God said he died on the cross for our sins, they say no, he didn't die. It was made to appear that he died. So God, their God would be a deceiver. I mean, again, understand, not all Muslims are bad. Most Muslims are very nominal and very nice, hospitable people. I love going to Muslim countries. I actually enjoy it. Please understand that. I hope you can understand. We will talk about things like uh, war will happen in Israel. We will talk about things like a lot of the rabbis and Jews do not believe our Messiah, their Messiah right now. But it doesn't mean that we would dislike going to Israel or hate Israel as a nation. Does that make sense? Okay, we talk often in history and we say, well, Adolf Hitler was a German dictator. But it doesn't mean that you wouldn't go visit Germany. It's a nice country, lots of nice people. But historically, there's a problem with dictatorships and people trying to control the whole world out of Germany. Okay, you got it? Okay, a little bit of caveat. So how does the solar eclipse point to Islam? Well, it happened, the sign of Jonah happened over the Islamic region. There's more to it. You look at this, what is this? I think this is gonna be the first time that you hear this revelation. What is this? Crescent moon? Symbol of? Symbol of Islam. Any Islamic country you're gonna see on top of their mosque? This symbol. Okay, and it's called a crescent moon. However, the moon never looks like this. Did you ever stop and ask yourself, when does the moon ever look like this? And the answer is never. The moon never looks like this. This is what our moon looks like. In all phases, I put them all up, like every phase that you can imagine and draw. And that crescent moon does not look like that at all. So what is it? Can I suggest to you something? Even if they don't know that they're doing it, God will use all these things prophetically. Take a look at what this is. Now the inner circle is too small, by the way. That's the why it doesn't look like the moon. The inner circle that's blocking this object is too small. So, does it not look like an annular solar eclipse? The symbol of Islam is a solar eclipse. Astronomically speaking, right? The drawers may not be, be aware of that, but astronomically speaking, it is an inaccurate picture of the moon. It is an accurate picture of a solar eclipse. 
And it's specifically an annular solar eclipse where the object that's blocking it is too small. And what happened last October? Annular solar eclipse. Then if we're not smart enough to figure this out, the universal, universal symbol of Islam is actually an annular solar eclipse. Give you the other view. Whichever way it comes in, it looks like the crescent of Islam. And what is God drawing over the United States? Three, well, one crescent. As, as it blocks, you're going to see more crescents, but three solar eclipses. And where do they go? They go over Jonah and 11 Ninevehs. Now, a lot of people debate this, so I'm just going to put it up so that people know. I don't know why people are repeating seven, but here it is. Nineveh, Texas, Nineveh, Missouri, Nineveh, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania twice, Virginia, New York, Nova Scotia, Canada twice, Kentucky misspelled, Nineveh with a V-A-H. So that's 11. There it is. So could God be more clear? This is the sign of Jonah. This is the one that goes over Jonah, goes over Nineveh. It is over an Islamic region back in 763 BC. We got the dragon washing up on the shore and we got the symbol of Islam over the United States. So, Jesus said twice in Matthew to look for the sign of Jonah. The sign of Jonah historically went over an Islamic region. The April 8th eclipse crosses one Jonah and 11 Ninevehs. Could it be more clear? And remember the green horse which, which Pastor John saw in a vision will include death by Islam. Death by a great sword. And that's coming soon too. So all of it is converging. Whichever way you want to look at Bible prophecy right now, I know if you're not Christian, you'll be scared to death, but don't be scared. We have a hope. We are the winners in the end. Jesus is the winner. Amen? Not only that, the three solar eclipses spell two Hebrew alphabets, the Aleph, the first one, and the Tav, the last one. This is the ancient way of writing it. Aleph Tav means the completed alphabet. Everything's included. Completed alphabet. How long does it take for God to draw this over the United States? Imagine taking seven years to draw one letter. God is super patient. He took seven years to draw one letter. Seven is the number of completion. So what does this mean? I would say that this seems to indicate what God's been giving me with the President Trump's uh, unfinished business and my message on biblical justice, it looks like it's a confirmation of a great reset is coming. A great reset. We've completed it. We've completed it in time. We've completed it in, in the way we've done things, and it ain't working. As much as we glorify the founding fathers and our constitution, it ain't working right now. So what's going to happen? I don't propose any violence, any revolution, but something is going to happen that's going to shock us. And it's going to be the opportunity, not for Klaus Schwab and Yuval Nova, Noah Harari to do their great reset of super control, of replacing our system with Marxism. No, nope. it's going to be an opportunity for God's reset. So I would tell people about it, especially before it happens. You know, I don't know if you can tell all that, but what my family and I are going to do, we're going to wear our faith on our sleeves. We made this, so, you know, if you don't want it, it's okay, but I made this for my family. I'm going to be wearing this on the day of the eclipse. I'm going to be in Texas as a t-shirt to say, final warning. Because you got a lot of new agers and people, they just love eclipses. They know about it. I'll walk into restaurants and I'll try to, you know, evangelize and say, do you know the eclipse is coming? They're like, oh yeah, April 8th. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be there. They know it more than the church seems to know it. So if you like it, I know that, you know, it's a conversation started for only about a month. So if you don't want it, it I uh, totally understand. But if you want it, it's at discoverchurch.online slash eclipse. And we'll try to get it out to you as fast as we can. And we just got to spread our faith. Whatever opportunity we have, carry books, wear a t-shirt, whatever you can, try to share the gospel now because the time is short. President's former national security advisor, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, pleaded guilty today to lying to the FBI. Flynn knew exactly how the system worked. He knew exactly what the intel world had been up to. He understood its funding. 